So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Cybersecurity and Awareness, um, a deep dive into Nobefore. Worsta is partnered with Nobefore to deliver this webinar. In this session, you'll see a deep dive into how the how the Nobefore platform can protect your organization. This deep dive will show you the key components of Nobefore and how you can apply this platform to your teams to fight against all types of cyber, um, cyber attacks. This meeting is being recorded and all registrants will receive a link to view this later this week. And we ask you to stay on mute throughout the time um, since we have a sizable audience for today's content. My name is Andrew Gansi, and I'm, I do work at Worcester doing demand generation. And joining me today is Katrina Rodzik, um, our expert from Nobefore. Thank you so much for having me today. I am a channel account manager here, been a product specialist for approximately six years. So I'm excited to uh, show off our platform today and teach you guys about making smarter security decisions. Awesome. I'm so excited to get started. You can also connect with us, connect with us on LinkedIn. Our um, colleagues are going to paste our profiles in the meeting chat. Um, so if you want to connect with us, it'd be a perfect way to um, keep the conversation started. Let me send that in there. And then once again, thank you everyone for being here. In case you didn't already know, this event is being hosted by Worsta. Um, our mission at Worsta is to help organization, organizations maximize their use of the cloud. We work side by side to help our clients make good technology decisions and grow their businesses in ways they wouldn't have the ability to, to do so otherwise. This helps organizations develop cultures of continu continuous innovation powered by real-time collaboration. With all that collaboration, however, organizations, organizations have a, a lot to worry about in terms of company security. So that's why we're here today and why we got our Know Before expert, um, Katrina, on the call. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me today, guys. I am excited to uh, talk to you a little bit about Know Before's foundation and then dive into the product um, and show you what we're all about here and why we are the leader in the industry, helping change the game uh, in helping end users be educated and make smarter security decisions uh, in your environment. So we currently have more than 50,000 customers uh, worldwide. Uh, we work in a variety of different verticals. It really doesn't matter what industry an organization is in nowadays. Cyber criminals aren't privy to um, specific industries or sizes. Um, you know, we work with customers um, of all different sizes, as small as 25 users, as large as I think our biggest customer to date is over 300,000 um, end users. So we've got a completely scalable product um, that is, you know, supportive for every different type of company culture as well. We do have 11 different offices globally. Um, we do have uh, 10 different content publishers. I actually, I think we're up to 11 now, um, all over the globe. So we never have still content, whether it comes to phishing or training. We're really just trying to stay ahead of the curve in terms of what the cyber criminals are being proactive on out there. Uh, now, as I mentioned, no before is a leader in the industry. It's been about five years running now, which is really exciting. Um, one of the key reasons for that is that we're so receptive to customer feedback. We want to know what's working, what's not working, uh, what your needs may be, and if we're missing anything that you think that we can do better. Um, so we continue to evolve, uh, redevelop our roadmap based on what our customers' needs are to help maintain you as a customer and help you grow and, and, and get better um, with those efficiencies internally. Now, as we know, people are going to be crucial in uh, every company's um, operations on a daily basis, which is why we've actually coined the term here as helping to create the human firewall. Uh, so it's no longer a matter of if something gets through the layers of security that are in place. It's a matter of when it does. And when it does, do those users know how to re react, respond, and handle um, those things? So as data has shown, about 91% of successful data breaches start with a spear phishing attack, um, human error, right? Uh, we see an increase year over year of um, compromised credentials, ransomware attacks, you know, an average breach for large organizations costing, you know, about 4.37 million, which is insane. Um, small businesses are seeing an average, and this is really small businesses uh, when you're looking at the statistics, um, you know, with under 50 employees, an average of over $25,000 in um, ransomware losses. So um, it's continuing to grow and be a billion dollar industry year over year. Uh, W2 scams are growing um, as well. So it's really just important to know how to defend your organization against things like that. Now, since human error is undeniable and humans are the weakest link in security, um, this graph kind of depicts uh, what action in or what th threat action in breaches has changed over time. Um, so you can see phishing 
for years has been towards the top, um, but year over year, it has maintained being in that top spot um, to be the driving force um, for cyber criminals. It's uh, very cost efficient for them to do, so uh, they're they're going to continue to do that. Um, they're building out, you know, bot networks and things like that to just um, spray and pray. Uh, CEO fraud is another um, huge uh, threat vector that you may hear out there. So. This is one of the biggest attacks that we hear uh, consistently. Um, essentially, it's a long-term game for the cyber criminals uh, with the biggest payout. So they're going to try and get within the network. They're going to monitor that network to find out the best way that they can steal information. They can get wire transfers. Um, there's a lot of, of terrible results that you know can ultimately uh, pan out from something like a CEO fraud breach, um, you know, from firings to lawsuits to reputation damage. So uh, our goal is to help you to train your users on, on what to look out for so this doesn't happen. And dominantly users are unaware of internet dangers. Um, you know, a lot of them haven't gone through any type of fundamentals training, so it's very easy for them to be uh, tricked. Um, social engineering tactics are uh, run amok out there with cyber criminals constantly evolving. So you know, they can click on things, they can open attachments, uh, enter information on landing pages. There's a variety of different ways. Um, and with that, the false sense of security that antivirus is going to uh, be really the end all um, and with seven to ten percent making it through the filters you know how are those users responding uh, do they know what to look out for do they know what those social engineering red flags are um, you know backups are great but they're not always uh, efficient uh, they're not always up to date uh, it can take days to restore so the goal is to avoid any type of downtime or having to, to utilize those right so how it all works is you start with a simulated phishing test to everyone in the organization to establish your baseline. We call this the fish prone percentage. It's really just the number of users that are prone to click on phishing um, emails based on their current knowledge level. Then you move into a fundamentals type training, get everybody onboarded. Um, and then we do recommend phishing the users at least on a monthly basis. You want to reinforce that knowledge um, with, with them. You want to condition that behavior for them to be looking out for those things. Uh, but everything in here is tracked. Um, you can run as many uh, or unlimited, I should say, phishing and training campaigns um, simultaneously. Um, you can really build out a robust program, starting small and building out um, to be more niche based on the type of behaviors and and risks and actions that you're seeing. Now, training or phishing alone uh, isn't really going to cut it. It is important to do uh, to combine them, um, which our platform is integrated. So those two do communicate with one another, uh, but done frequently and re reinforcing each other is going to create the most effectiveness in the organization. It's also important to train everyone from the top down. You want to make sure everybody from uh, the boardroom to the lunchroom, as we say here, is uh, going through training. And we do have a dynamic library. So uh, the, the content that you utilize for people can be different. Like a, we've got a C-suite um, series of uh, micro modules. We've also got training that's geared towards accounting or IT. Um, but really, it should be on-demand, interactive, and engaging. Um, it's going to be much more receptive. Um, they're going to retain more information. And it's important to cover all of the different type of mechanisms that they can see um, based on their day-to-day -day job as well. And as I mentioned, that baseline phishing test, it's super important because you can't manage what you don't measure. So establishing that baseline gives you um, a identified starting point of your user's knowledge. Um, also, our virtual risk officer uh, is a uh, great asset in the platform uh, to help you analyze um, things by user group and from an organizational level. Um, you can make data-driven decisions as you're building out your programs. Uh, you can understand, you know, what users are the most vulnerable to phishing attacks, what they're most prone to click on for phishing templates. If people have gone through training, haven't gone through training, you can identify where your biggest highest or highest risk groups are um, and then implement a program that's going to be targeted to reducing that risk. And I'll harp on this consistently. We always do over here. But, um, you know, 
consistency. It's super important to uh, not only train, but uh, continue to fish, to be dynamic and, and fish users with different types of emails, uh, with different difficulty ratings. Uh, you want to make sure that you're keeping security at the top of mind. Over time, you're going to condition that behavior within them. So it's going to be natural for them to be looking out for these things instead of, uh, you know, work or um, something that may be scary for them. Um, as cyber criminals are evolving, we're continuously evolving and building out new content. So we're making it very easy for you to to drive those uh, different types of phishing emails, um, analyze that data, and then follow up with training. Um, again, because we're proactive, we've got a lot of content publishers. It's super important that we're keeping um, the content as fresh as possible as to what you're actually seeing in your inboxes and being targeted with. Now we do have a full product suite. I will be show, touching on um, all of these things with you guys today as I go through the platform. Uh, what we're most well known for is our security awareness training and phishing platform. So it is an integrated platform. Um, so, you know, if somebody does fit click on a phishing email and fail, you can have an automated remedial training campaign that would set up to be delivered to them based on that failure. Um, we have expanded the platform to also um, open up with compliance content. Uh, this can help you to satisfy risk, regulatory, and HR compliance. And then we also have Fish ER, which is our incident response tool that helps you to manage the influx of the reported phishing emails now that you've taught those users to make those smarter decisions. And, and it, it's going to give you better visibility of, of things that you're being targeted with. Um, but because you're educating them to do, uh, to report them instead of just delete them, or if you had a forwarding process in place that people didn't use before, it can create an uptick in the amount of emails that you need to manage. So we've created a way to um, kind of quiet that noise down and automate the process and identify those threats faster to take action on them. And then also, also if you do manage multiple compliance frameworks, um, we do also have a uh, GRC tool. So things like HIPAA, um, PCI, PHI, um, CMMC, NIST, if any of those are trigger words for you, um, it's something that most folks don't know, but uh, we do have a GRC platform. So um, definitely reach out to Worsta if you are interested in learning more about that as well, since I won't be reviewing that product today. And we are a company that focuses very heavily on industry proven results. So this right here is highlighting about 9.5 million users in our platform. You can see that the average starting point is sitting uh, just over 32% for an organization on that baseline. After you get everybody um, trained, you're gonna see on average about a 50% decrease when you run that secondary baseline. But really the goal is to give you guys the tools to create a cultural and behavioral change. So you're continuing to drive that number down and that you're really trying to get it as close to zero as possible and keep it there. So now I will jump into the exciting stuff over here uh, with the platform for you guys today. So dominantly what I'm going to be showing you is the admin facing view. So, um, you know, when you're in there managing things um, or pulling reports, uh, anything, this is really what you're going to be seeing, but I will show you what the end user does experience as well. Uh, so the first thing that you see when you log in, it's going to be what we call the customer facing dashboard. Um, this is going to give you the organization's risk score overall. Um, this is compiled dominantly by the behaviors in the platform, but we do have some other things that we do. Like we run a monthly email exposure check for our clients, which is basically scouring the World Wide Web for email addresses that are affiliated with your domain that are out there in the wild. If we can find them, so can the cyber criminals, right? Uh, we're also partnered with SpyCloud, so we can cross check those um, email addresses that were discovered against known breaches. So um, you can actually get a report monthly to see, you know, what's happening out there in the wild and how risky you are. So there are a couple other drops that go into that risk history bucket for you. You also have visibility on phishing security tests. Um, here it's showing about a six month term, all of the actions affiliated with those. You can see if people are clicking, entering information, replying, uh, successfully reporting simulated emails, uh, opening attachments. And we do uh, provide industry benchmarking. So if you wanted to see how you measure up against other organizations within a similar industry or of a similar size, um, you can see what the baseline expectation is upwards to the one year expectation. And then also you can track the use of our fish alert button. So this is a great feature. Um, essentially, uh, depending on what email client you have, it's going to show up as an extension of the toolbar. 
Uh, let me zoom in a little bit further here for you. But it's going to populate either as an envelope with a fish hook or a little orange fish hook. But we even have a training trainings in the platform that, you know, two to three minute training modules that educate the users to what this button is and why it's important to use it. But basically, with the use of this button, they can streamline the reporting of anything suspicious that they identify um, in their inboxes. So when they open an email, it's suspicious with a click of a button, it's going to delete it off their lines and it's going to forward it on to uh, the security team or incident response team to review. Now, if it is a simulated email, they're actually going to receive a congratulations message. So it does have positive reinforcement in it, which then can become kind of a game and people use it more and more, right? So here you can see the uh, use of that button and it's all tracked simulated versus non-simulated emails. Um, so you can pull that data and compare and really see, you know, what you guys are being targeted with month to month. First thing that you would do is upload users in the platform. We do support three different methods to do that. We've got Active Directory integration. We've got a CSV import um, as well as a copy and paste method. Active Directory is definitely going to be the best method because you can allow it to sync on a daily basis and any changes that you make to your Active Directory would automatically sync to the platform. So if you have new employees coming in, if you have employee name changes, um, you know, somebody gets married, anything like that, um, it's gonna automatically fix itself um, when it resyncs because it is a one-way push of information into the platform. It also allows you to specify O users and groups so you can departmentalize or have things organized uh, in your uh, platform just as it is in your network. Um, and this is going to help you to be more efficient when it comes to testing and training. Um, but you can create additional groups in the platform. Doing things like creating a clickers group is going to allow you to create that automated process to um, of remedial training if people are clicking on phishing emails as well. But let me show you guys a little bit about end user specifics here, because you can always drill down to not just by department, um, but by individual user. So this right here is um, an example of an end user dashboard. You can view fish prone percentage. You can view, uh, you know, where the data that compiles that percentage, um, training assignments, how many they've completed, uh, not completed. And each person does have their own risk score, which is uh, compiled by these five risk factors to the right, most of which are data driven. Um, but if you do have a, a manual reason to boost somebody, something that happened outside of the platform, you can go in and add a manual booster um, and include a reason there as well. But most importantly, you can track all of the behaviors with phishing. So this right here is giving us some insight um, on Fritz's behaviors. So you can see that uh, this user is clicking, they're replying to emails, they're opening attachments with macros, they're entering information on landing pages. Uh, we actually even released this new feature um, to embed QR codes in emails as well earlier this year. Uh, following Super Bowl earlier this year where there was that QR code just bouncing around the screen, look kind of looked like a screen saver, but there was no data and how many people just picked up their phones and scanned that QR code. Um, it was eye opening to, um, and a marketing genius ploy, by the way, but uh, it made you realize that QR codes are uh, just as much of a threat out there as everything else. So you can test your, your users with QR code scanning as well. And here's an example of an email template that is pre-built in our platform. So as you can see, these do get very realistic. We are not saving these images and hosting them anywhere. So there is no copyright infringement. We're just pulling these images straight from Google Images um, and emulating what the cyber criminals have access to do. Uh, we also have the ability to spoof from any domain. So um, if you wanted this to look like it was coming from pizza.com, you absolutely could. Um, you can spoof from your internal domain as well, um, really get get down to the nitty gritty and, and get really deceitful in the ways, uh, the mechanics that you're trying to uh, to test them. Because as I stated before, you do want to increase the, the difficulty rating, starting off with one star is building up to five stars, right? And then on the training side, you also have visibility of uh, how long it takes somebody when they started, um, you know, all of that good stuff. We do also have course completion certificates built in here. So in line with that positive reinforcement with that fish alert button telling them they've successfully passed a test, you can actually give them a certificate for completing their trainings as well. So now I will step into training. You're going to see our interface is very clean and easy to use. It's it's not going to be very cumbersome for you to get set up. Um, so creating campaigns is, is super simple. I'll show you what the uh, campaign creator looks like here. 
but you're able to select a start date and time. Um, one of the great features that we offer is called relative duration. Uh, this actually allows, let's say you've got Active Directory, so your users are syncing on a daily basis. Um, if you have a compliance mandate for training, whether it's uh, HIPAA compliance, NIST compliance, or um, cyber insurance mandate, and you need everyone in the organization to stay up to date, um, you can actually utilize this feature to create a onboarding training. So if we call it onboarding training, you could create a campaign that's going to sit out there for onboarding training. And you're going to create a sense of urgency of maybe three weeks for them to complete it. But basically every single person that gets added to the system would be identified as a user. And if they're part of the all users group and they haven't gone through the onboarding training, within 24 hours of being added to the system, they are gonna receive a uh, communication for them to complete the training. So relative duration helps automate the process for anybody new that you're onboarding, um, You know whether it's three weeks away or six months away, which is pretty awesome. And this is also where you can get granular with those groups. So if you wanted to target specific groups with things that they may be uh, more prone to be targeted with based on their role in the organization, maybe the accounting team, you do want to target them with CEO fraud or wire transfer fraud, phishing or training. Um, you can do things like that as well. And then we have tons of notifications that are pre-built in here, just really making this easy for you to get up and running quickly uh, in the environment. Everything from welcome emails for the end users, reminder notifications to them. Uh, you can send reminder notifications to managers or admins. Um, there's all kinds of great stuff. And we do have pre-built notifications, but you can modify any of that stuff to include your logo, um, you know, signatures, deliveries, um, or build from scratch. Now I'll show you once they log in, this is going to be the end user interface. And we did just launch our mobile app, as you can see up here, which is super exciting. So uh, not only do they have the ability to log in and take it from their computers, but um, we now have a full scale app that they can uh, take all of their trainings through um, from mobile devices. And here they're gonna have their own fun little dashboard. It's gonna give them visibility on training that they've completed or not completed. Um, they can see their use of that fish alert button. So if they've uh, successfully reported phishing emails that were simulated, it's gonna show them how many they have. Um, if they failed phishing tests, uh, clearly this user is doing a terrible job with seven failures, right? And then any training that they've been assigned, it's going to be over under the training tab. All of our training content is going to be interactive and engaging. They're gonna to have to click through, they're gonna to have to take quizzes. They can't just press play and walk away. All they have to do is click this orange button to get started. Um, but as you can see, if you do need to step away for any reason, they can resume where they left off. And then since everything is tracked, you can always delve into an active campaign. Uh, you can pull reporting on old campaigns. You can pull reports in, in general detailing, you know, if, if you wanted to confirm maybe for cyber insurance is a big one. You may hear me say that a handful of times today. Um, we're seeing a lot of organizations that need to um, satisfy a cyber insurance mandate to renew their policy. So uh, they're going to need to pull a report that they've gone through security awareness training, all users, you know, from a certain date and time, and you can scroll down and see users who have completed the content so they can validate that all their employees have gone through it. Another awesome feature that we have in here is called our security knowledge assessment. So this is actually a questionnaire that you can send out to everyone in the organization. Um, all of the questions are multiple choice questions. Uh, they're all centralized around these security topics here. Um, but based on the end user's responses, you can actually identify where your biggest strengths and weaknesses are as an organization, and you can focus on closing those gaps during the term of your subscription. And these are all hot links, so you can drill down um, into our mod store, which is our next step anyway, um, to see content specific to that security topic. So over in our mod store is where all of our cybersecurity content is hosted. We do have the largest cybersecurity content library in the world. Uh, with the Diamond package, we do have upwards of 1,400 pieces of content, uh, different types of content as well. So really just depending on your company culture, we give you a very flexible way to um, get the best response from your end users uh, that for them to be the most receptive and engaged. So there's training modules, there's gamification, video modules, PDF images, newsletters, security docs. Um, all kinds of stuff in here. You can drill down by topic. 
Um, this is highlighting our Compliance Plus content as well. You do have visibility on that um, to preview it, even if it isn't something that um, you currently need. Um, you can identify if there are things in there that it might be a good fit for you guys to include later on down the road. We've got different duration types. Um, so you can either you know, kind of navigate through this on, on your own based on something that security knowledge, like that security knowledge assessment, or we also do provide guidance with like um, quarterly, we've got sales training programs that um, guides that we provide. And we also do assign everybody a dedicated customer success manager. So in, in addition to working with the worst of team, you actually do have a dedicated rep uh, product specialist like myself, um, with, but focused on, on active customers um, to work with you to make sure that you're taking full advantage of the features and content in the platform that's going to be most effective for you and your organization. And now let me hop over to phishing, show you guys a little bit about what we got going on over here. So uh, we currently have more than 18,000 pre-built templates. So again, we just have a huge library. Um, the goal is just to make this easy for you. We're going to continue to develop content for training and phishing templates on the back end. You can create your own uh, phishing templates. You can modify any of these that are in here, um, but really just taking a lot of the labor intensive work out of it for you. All of the emails are going to be categorized as well, so you can be selective on the categories that you're targeting your users with, uh, making sure that it is the most effective way that uh, you're phishing them. But we do also have sections that are not phishing security tests. Um, those that say not PST, um, those are strictly informative. So really just depending on how robust of an awareness culture that you're looking to facilitate, you have access to, to additional tools to do so. Um, the scam of the week here, this could be something they could see on their personal lines or on their business lines. Um, we've got coronavirus alerts security hints and tips, all kinds of great stuff in here. And then I also want to show you our two-step failures section. So this Netflix uh, email was rotating quite a bit out there in the wild over the past two years. As you can imagine, with the pandemic, you had students learning remotely, you had parents working remotely. Um, so cyber criminals are privy to things like that, right? So uh, they were sending out this email saying that your Netflix account is on hold. So of course, nobody wants to lose their streaming services. So they're going to go ahead and click. They're going to be redirected to this lovely landing page uh, where they would enter their credentials and click sign in. Uh, we're not logging the keystrokes. We don't know specifically what they put in, but in this scenario, not only did they click on a malicious link, but they also entered sensitive information. So it is a two-step failure. And speaking of landing pages, we do have over 200 landing pages pre-built. So again, offering flexibility um, enables you to be dynamic in, in the way that you're uh, phishing your users. Um, we've got everything from point of failure videos, error pages, um, like a 404 broken link page or page not found if you don't want people to know you're phishing them. Uh, scary stuff like hack attacks. Uh, but we also have this awesome feature called our social engineering indicators landing page. This is actually one of my favorite features in the platform. Basically, when they receive a simulated email, if they click on a link, they're going to be redirected here. First, it's going to identify that they failed. But secondly, it's going to auto populate the email template that they just clicked on. So they can actually hover their mouse over those red flags to identify why it's a red flag and why they shouldn't have clicked. So you're really capitalizing on a teachable moment. Uh, you're giving them the opportunity to learn from their mistake. We all know that everyone's moving 100 miles per hour a day, so they're not going to go back to that original email and try and figure it out, right? So putting this in front of them um, it makes it uh, more promising that they're actually going to learn immediately from that failure. And then from a campaign side, um, again, campaigns are easy to create. Uh, from that monthly recommendation, for you to target all users monthly, you can select a monthly frequency. You can define your business days and hours. You can select the email templates that are most relevant for you. And our platform does default to populate at full random. So that means that everyone gets a different email at a different time during that window of delivery. Um, it's removing what we call the prairie dog effect, where the cyber criminals used to hit everyone with the same email at the same time. And then, you know, in an office environment, everybody's popping their heads out of their offices or up over their cubicles to say, hey, did you get that email? don't click on it. So it's not even giving people the opportunity to make that educated decision on their own. So by targeting them with different things at different times, um, you're definitely going to educate them um, on an individual level, right? 
Now, if you opted um, to select the monthly frequency in this scenario, if you click create campaign, you would actually be setting a campaign that would be kind of on a set it and forget it um, for you, where on the 10th of every month, there would be a campaign that started uh, for all users to be targeted with the category templates, uh, emails, it would deliver those over three days in this scenario during these business day uh, hours. It would track for three days afterwards in the case anybody was on vacation per se. Um, and then it would kick out a report for you. So let me show you what that looks like. Here is an example of uh, the, the automated report that kicks out to give you visibility on the statistics for that campaign. So you can see how many emails were delivered, uh, what your fish prone percentage looks like based on those deliveries. But it is a report with hot links, so you can drill down further um, and, and investigate you know, who those clickers were. Uh, when you do that, you can identify things like the failures by hour, failures by day, failures by location, uh, lots of cool stuff to track here. But the better information is going to be under the users tab, of course, so you can see exactly who those clickers are and you are able to pull this information out of the platform as well. Um, I will say that when you get granular and look into the user specific data, uh, one additional piece of the puzzle that you see is the number of people that opened the email, not just how many it was delivered to. So you can see here that there were 539 emails delivered, 155 people opened them, but we've got almost a 90% conversion rate of how many people that are willing to click on an email based on opening it. Uh, actually, let me jump over to USB first. So we also do support um, USB drive testing. So these are beaconized files that we provide that you can load onto USB sticks, uh, leave them in high traffic areas and see if people pick them up, plug them in and open up those files. If you wanted to have uh, documents that are, you know, bonus structure for Q1 uh, 2023 or firings Q3 2022, you know, things that people are nosy, it's human nature, right? Uh, see if they'll actually open those up, uh, dig in. Uh, and find try to find that information. If they do, this is the type of information that you're able to uh, obtain. Now let me jump over to ASAP. So a lot of times the first question we get, um, especially for organizations that are new to onboarding a security awareness training program is where do I start? right? Um, we've got a super robust platform um, that can be built out, but you can start with the fundamentals. And we've actually built this questionnaire that's about seven to 10 questions to help guide you on that path um, from a starting point to, to being successful. Um, this It's based on things like the industry you're in, the size of your organization, the goals that you're going to satisfy by getting a program in place, um, you'll ultimately get kind of a task-driven list and a, a guideline to follow. So not only do you have the worst of team, not only do you have your customer success manager, but you also have uh, tools at your fingertips that you can utilize as well, which is awesome. And then the last thing that I do want to touch on is we just released a brand new feature called Security Coach. Um, you're going to be seeing more information about it out there, which is um, super exciting. Um, Security Coach allows you to leverage your existing security stack to provide real-time security tips to users based on your already tracked risky behavior. So we do have a subset of integrations currently. Um, we have over 100 of them on the roadmap to be released in uh, the next quarter or two, which is really exciting um but it's super simple to utilize it's really just setting up the security vendors um for who you work with and i can show you guys some of the available integrations currently um here and setting up the delivery method so those security tips can be sent to you via slack via teams uh via email mapping the users out, creating uh, detection rules that you want it uh, to respond to, um, and then setting up those campaigns so that a real-time campaign would be delivered. Um, some examples of this um, would be if somebody maybe logs in without using their VPN, um, there's an immediate notification because that's a trackable offense uh, or a risky, be trackable risky behavior uh, in the organization. Um, they can receive a Teams message and it can be a little PDF images, a PDF image um, that's built into the uh, the real-time coaching. Um, I don't 
think they have them loaded here yet, but I can absolutely get you guys some example and some more information on this. Um, again, this was just released this week, so we're super excited about it. Um, and it's really just enhancing our platform to focus on what we're calling human detection response, um, HDR. So it's not just about security awareness training and phishing. Um, you know, the security cultural maturity model is really what our focus is. Um, you know, humans being a dynamic part of the security in an organization. So that is uh, all I have on my side. Uh, let me pass it over back over to Andrew here. Yeah, that, that was amazing. Thank you for going into like detail on that. It's, it's very good clarity to like understand like the, the back end and the inside and kind of having like the presentation before and then the demo. Perfect. Um, so yeah, so kind of going to like how can Worsa help? So at here at Worsa, we have a, ver a various of services, trainings, and offerings that we can help you implement a successful cybersecurity environment at your organization. We'll be in touch soon after today's session to provide you with the resources you need to get started um, in ensuring your um, organization is set up for success. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask during our Q&A session, which will be starting soon.